medical doctor in the National Hospital. And she already gave me three beautiful, brilliant grandchildren. One of them will share a common birthday, 12 November. So I was asking the father, how did you know? <laughs> the emphasis why I'm talking about the coupon and co. Today in Nigeria, we do many interventions in the name of eradication of poverty. I'm aware of cash transfer. Recently, I saw that about 15 million households will have a cash transfer. You are aware when Oshobanjo was going from market to market to give trader money. I think, in my opinion, that that kind of intervention is not effective. You know about the Uncle borrowers. Many people collected this money and they are not going to pay back. In fact, many of people who collected who are not farmers. So my thought is, why don't you mandate the Ministry of Humanitarian Services to begin to think seriously about social security? Anybody who is above 70, who is not collecting pension, should be considered. Any child, and another version, I was fed in the primary school. I was given breakfast in the primary school, and I was given American milk, when quite like, like this. I don't know how many of us enjoyed it. Uh, the American milk like this in, 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 in brown, Quality. And the school was the one administering such a thing. But today you have contractors. I saw where a contractor divided an egg into four places. One egg, four places, and giving it to the children. I think if we're going to feed the children in the school, led the school administration. When I was uh, an NCE teacher, I was the food master of my school. And everybody ate well. And the teachers were always looking forward to holidays because when the children go on holidays, whatever remained in the store, I would distribute to the teachers. I think we should go back to that, where we can hold some people responsible, whether the children are fed well or not fed well. So our ambitious young man was really influenced by Abraham Lincoln and other black writers that he came across, and he did very well. He came back but stayed first in Ghana, where his journalism proved to be the best thing that has happened to Africa. And that was where Kwame Nkrumah met him. Many people argue that Kwame Nkrumah went to Lincoln University because of his discussion with Zeke, because Zeke also went to that university. He also influenced a Mualimu Julius Nyerere because they all said it, that their influence was coming from Zik. This is one hero that Nigerians will do better to make his name a household name so that people can understand his quality. Because of what he went through, he was able to navigate the unpredictable political terrain of Nigeria. Many people know about the NCNC 
the Lateran, the MPP in 79-83. But let's go back a little. Many people have been asking if Zik had aligned with Aolo, he would have been the Prime Minister. And they thought, why will you leave main job for what you can call ceremonial job as a president? There was something I didn't say because I didn't want somebody to think that I was being uh, unnecessarily critical. Awolowo and Zik came together at the National Youth Movement. And when there was going to be an election, Zik supported Akinsanya and Ijebu Yoruba man. And Awolo supported Ernest Ikoli and Ibo man. The idea was to create an impression that Zik did not want his own. That's one. After the election, Zik had to resign from the youth movement. He resigned because he felt that the mainstream Yoruba were discriminating against the Ijebu Yoruba and the Igbos. That's one. Two, I told you about the election where 20 people were stolen away from him. Now, if one person, if they say, shame on you, what if you cheat me once? Now, what about twice? What about thrice? Then you are the fool. <laughs> so that's why even when in 1979-83 elections, they formed what they called PPA, they could not agree between Awolo and Zik, who should be presidential candidate. And the two of them came out because of the distrust that had already been building up. So Zik naturally was with MPC, Northern People's Congress, and with MPN. Uh, which, uh, that's the party I won election. I went to the House of Representatives. What is MPN? Nigeria? National Party. Okay. No, I will not forget PDP since I'm still a member. <laughs> So those his experience and the things that he faced really shaped his worldly outlook. And that is why he wasn't talking only of Nigeria. He was talking of Africa as a whole. When people talk about that, the High Commissioner of India is here. India today, the population is over one billion people. And talking of diversity, you know, you in Nigeria today, when you talk about, about India, you think it's one language. It is not. In fact, they even have black Indians. When you go to near the Ceylon, the southern part, the black ones. So, diversity, India has been able to work on diversity. China. People see Chinese as the same. Like they see us, when they see black people, they think we will all look alike. I was in China when I saw ladies that were taller than me. I was going to a disco, I thought I was going to do so much, only for me to discover that they were taller Chinese than me, they were more Western than me, so I just sat down looking at them. So diversity, like I said earlier, should not be an issue. And anybody who you hear talking about it much only wants to cheat you. I have not seen anybody, even though we say royal fathers are blue blood go, but believe me, we all have red blood. If you pinch me, I will feel the pain. If I pinch you, you will feel the pain. 
If you are hungry, you are hungry. If I'm hungry, I'm, I'm hungry. So first and foremost, the humanity and the dignity that should go with it. He settled for the ideology of neo welfareism What he was thinking in terms of, he was, look, we must get, get something clear. Zeke was not for bloody revolution. I wonder many, anybody who has gone to school in America whether he would be for bloody revolution. Zeke preferred dialogue. The dialogue can solve any problem. So for him, the welfareism he is thinking of is that the government or the state must provide housing, must provide health, must provide education, and all other things, the little contributions that people will make will be required time to time, but that the state must be able to do that. And any country that you see peaceful is because the state is doing such things. Why would you want to fight, or why would you want to go on strike when your issues have been solved? But you will go on strike when there is impunity. You will go on strike when your entitlements are not paid. You will go on strike when you see somebody who yesterday had no shoes. 24 hours he has become a millionaire. And that happens only in Nigeria. Where somebody you know, you know, get one cobble. But because you know somebody, tomorrow he is the millionaire of all. If they don't even talk of billions now, they talk of billions. Even our budget is now in trillion. But I remember when budgets were in millions. You know. So his own thinking is that please let the state take responsibilities. And the economy must be an economy of abundance of which Nigeria all has the chances to do that. If not that we dependent, I mean we depend on the oil, and even the oil, what we are required to be given or to produce, we are not producing. We should be producing two point something. My state over 76,000 square kilometers. You will take the southeast, the five states of southeast, and put into three places, and there will still be land for you in Niger State. So, by the by the arable land of Niger State alone, not only can it feed Nigeria, but that it can feed West Africa, and you still export. But why are we not doing that? Because we are still on subsistence farming. And every day, every year, people will say Ministry of Agric is buying this fertilizer, is doing that, is spending this money. Nobody has been able to quantify the amount of money spent and what it has produced. We need to ask the questions. Nigeria alone. Look, all the countries that we were importing rice and what have you. They are small countries. What is the size of Taiwan? What is the size of Thailand? Small countries. But because they know what they were doing, when they say they are spending a naira for this, they will get two naira for what they are spending for one naira for. But here they will tell you we are spending one million. The person who is to spend the one million may hardly get 10,000 out of it. And yet, we don't ask the right questions. So please, pay attention. Don't give up. Don't give up because sometimes politics has a way of discouraging people. When you vote and vote and vote, 
and you know you have voted this way, they, it has been calculated that you have voted right, only for the announcement to be different, still you should not be discouraged. Continue to do the right thing. Many people have asked, I remember in a discussion, somebody asked me and said, did Zik support, no, first, was Zik aware that the Inzegu Kaduna, the FA joiners, was, was he aware that they were going to have a coup? I say, well, if you had asked when he was alive, we would have driven to ask him directly. And I'm not going to ask his wife because that issue may not have come up. But I don't want to believe that he was aware. Because as the president of the country at the time, he would have alerted the security agencies and something could have been done. Then somebody said, but he supported Biafra. For those of you who remember, after the first coup, the first coup killed only the leaders of Western region and Northern region. Only Equitable was from the East at that time that was killed. Midwest. Midwest, but let's even assume that it was part of that was killed. Given the impression, and already if you remember, because of the accessibility of education and the nature of the, democr the democratic nature of the Igbo land at that time, they accepted education. So they were more in the railways, in the PNTs, and coal. When I was younger and I, my bag had started coming, somebody said, uh, all those with bag head are very rich people. I said, look at the people in PNT. Look at the people in way with bag head, they are not rich. You know. They were there, so there was this issue of saying that the Igbo were dominating Nigeria. So already that feeling was coming up. And then this coup. And you remember the counter coup? The counter coup was a reaction to the first coup. At that time, even if Zik had said, I'm for Nigeria, <laughs> I don't think Nigerians, the federal government of this side, would have trusted him. So sometimes circumstances can push you even if you don't want a thing. Yes, he became an advisor to Odume Gojuku, and maybe that's why even the Civil War ended up earlier. The IBMs are here, they know more about such areas. And maybe that's why, because he was an advisor. Yes, he rallied around to get recognition for Biafra. But what will you have done if you are in his position? But then in 1969, before 1970, he realized the hopelessness of that war. And he declared for the federal government and for one Nigeria. And that's why I asserted that maybe that's why the civil war ended up earlier, because he must have advised Ojuku, I bet leave this country, if not. And you know, he ran to Cote d'Ivoire. So unity in diversity, where there is no equity and inclusivity, there cannot be unity. A keynote speaker is never given time. <laughs> you say keynote speaker. I spent three nights writing. And yeah. Anyway, I think I've printed enough copies for people. Yes. Have they distributed? Yes. yes. Good. So in summary, we need 
to have equity in whatever we do. As a leader, if you are nepotic, you will see the result of your nepotism because you will not get the best result. The people you appoint because they are close to you or because they are the ones you know will do what they want to do because they will take you for granted. If you hear noise, it is only when people feel marginalized. If the right people are not appointed and the right people are not in places where the work can be done, then you have problems. But where equitably you discover Already our constitution has taken care in terms of ministerial appointment. It said you must have one, at least one, per state. But ministers, with all due respect, <laughs> a former permanent secretary, I know sometimes ministers will play with them like this. Because it's what we write, what we tell them, that uh, Mostly. <laughs> Confession. <laughs> Confession. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. It's a system. It's a system. You know. You come fresh. These are people who have been there, who know the rules, who do this and that. The main job or where to pay attention is actually in the civil service and in the MDAs, department and agencies. That is where the main work is done. And when you hear corruption, again, that is where it is done. When a minister, for example, says, Pamsek, I have one problem. Please help me with two million. You, the, 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 the minister will get two million. But what will come out from the coffer may be seven million. The minister will take his two, the PAMSEC will take key directors, depending on where the money is coming from, will take, the account clerk will take, there is even what they call, is a final account. They are the ones when you finish everything, they will take, you have to close their mouth. So that is why we must pay attention to quality of people that we put in our civil service and in our MDS. The civil service today, as I understand it, they have nothing much to do. They have been neglected. Many of them don't even go to work because there is no work to do. The politicians have now gone to consultant and to contractors. When I was told that a director was the one holding a file by himself, I said, where are that chick? Why should a director, what didn't concern a director, bring a file and he endorses and it goes. Go to many ministries, you won't see people around. And something new has happened. I hope the government will investigate to find out. That is, Mr. Chairman, appointment for sale. Appointment for sale. Yes. Level 8, 3 million. Level 10, 5 million. Level 12, and then in the MDAs, in the department that are richer, you are talking of 20, 20 something million. And I'm speaking to you with authority. If anybody says it's a lie, tell him that I said so. Why? Because I had two criminal, criminals in my house. Two people who were squatting in my house. I didn't know what they were doing until the report started coming. Somebody came from Kano to my house. I started crying. And when asked, what happened? He said he gave, he mentioned the names. 
he gave them 16 million for either about seven jobs. Then, what I called one of the boys in my house, I said, go and strike them out. I think they, they paid something back. I thought it had stopped there. A lady from Niger State came to my house and said she was reporting social services. I said, for what? She said she gave them 26 million for about nine jobs. I said, well, that I got annoyed. I said, did they mention my name? They said, no. Then why did you come to my house? I said, they, they stayed here. I said, why didn't you go to Milan? Because that's where they should have stayed. He said, no, they were told that the job for, that they were going to buy for her was in Abuja. So I said, they didn't mention my name. I have nothing to do with it. And please go and call the police so that they get them. But remember, you, that you wanted to buy the job, you are as criminal as they who are collecting this for you. And I think that's why she didn't call the police. But I didn't know that they were still on it until they quarreled. I think there was a 10 million naira between them and somebody in the Civil Service Commission that they fought. And then one of them came reporting the other. So I said, OK. Now, with all my sense of generosity, leave my house, go and sort yourselves out. When you finish, then I can hear from you. I gave them four weeks to sort out. Now we are in the sixth week. They have not sorted out. But I got a letter from the police in Niger. Somebody had gone to police to report them. And the police wrote to me that since they were in my house, I said, no, they are on their own. I did not give birth to them. <laughs> now, I went into this detail so that somebody can tell you it's a lie. I would have also not, as a, civil, as a former civil servant, I would have said it was impossible. But it's happening. Now, if it is happening in the civil service, it will also happen in the political one. That people will buy positions. But the, the issue, my concern is, the civil servant is supposed to be a neutral, non-partisan, and his loyalty is to the country and to the government of the day, no matter who is the government of the day. If I purchase my job, I pay money to get a seat. A mother of all corruption. Because I must get my money back first. It's an investment. For a level 8 officer, it will take you one and a half years to get three million in terms of salary. Not up to. Hmm? Not up to. Not up. So, if you can't get that, it means anything you see is your own. And loyalty, how can I be loyal to what I bought? So we must investigate this matter so that we bring equity and inclusivity into the system. Not to mention that we're not talking about our curriculum. What do we need now in Nigeria? What type of job should there be for our progress? Must we continue with the curriculum of producing only civil servants for government? No. The countries are going scientific. We must go sciences, we must go internet, we must do what is right for the 21st century. May God forgive and help our heroes. And may God give us more heroes 
in this country that will remember and be happy. Not the ones that will remember and be sad. There is one leader that for me, between me and him, only Allah is I thank you very much. Sir.